try and do that. What we can do, and there's no harm in this, is add an extra piece in. So from eight onwards, you want him doing this sort of movement. If we come back a couple of a frame, or maybe a couple of frames, we want him still to be round at this point. So we can send it back to being round by going to our control panel, setting it to zero. Take the bottom one, set that to zero as well. So it's nice and round. Data key. So you've got this extra point in. So you can see that he stretches into that into that position for that short period of time. Again, let's let's have a look at all his curves. So lots in there now. You can see that you know holds his form, changes as his form changes. It will have put an extra key in on this object as well, so you can see a slight glitch in our nice smooth movement. So what we can do is just come in and go, I'll take that one, press delete, take it out. So he's got now only got that extra key on those stretches in. Coming out, maybe we want him to hold a little bit longer. down, keeping the shape. So we move that one across and following that shape nicely. Save the key. So we'll probably take it off the movement because that's a bit much. You'll notice the whole time just pressing A. Put it in. Take it off. Well, what he really needs there is a little pause where he sort of squashes into that pose, or maybe we just squash in a bit on this pose. So on that frame 10, we might have it save, we're just going to pop another key in. Squash him down a bit, save it. And what it stretches in, squish, pops up. Same here, you notice he's stretching out as he comes in towards that pose. Save the key. Keys that I don't need. Doing the same body movement. Select them, delete them. And here, probably going to need some squashing. And then he's going to relax back out of it again. So yeah, bring him back out to being full size. So maybe overshoot it a little bit too. So we have a little sort of breath. The end. Very quickly put a little bouncy ball in to give him a bit of life into this. Taking out extra keys where I don't need them and keeping them where I actually do. Once you've got it, roughly laid out as, as we have, and we've watched it through, it looks quite good. But it's difficult to tell at the moment because we're seeing lots of different things. Our eyes showing us that it's going on this path. So first off, let's get rid of the, this motion curve. So I'll select it. It's difficult to tell it's selected. So I'm going to press delete, so that goes away. So that's better. We're now seeing the movement a little bit better. It's also quite good to not see these curves because they throw our eye as well. So in our 3D window, just go to show. On the top one, nerves curves, this is what these curves are made from. If we just tick that little box that unclicks, they disappear. So we can now actually watch the animation. So I can see that little bounces are quite nice. If I want them back, I just go to show and nerves curves. Now all we need is to know how we get this out. So to get it out, we'll turn those curves off because we don't want to see them. We can do what's called a play blast. A play blast just records what's happening on the screen. To do this, we click in the window that we want to work in. We go to Windows and Play Blast and bring up the options. Let me 
make it mine so it will look like yours. Okay, with the play blast options, first off we need to know how much of the screen it's going to view. So what's worth doing is setting it up as if this was our final render. So what we need to do is tell Maya uh, what size we're outputting to. So if we go up to render settings, which is the little clapperboard with the settings, and on the first tab, regardless of what uh, renderer we're in, if we scroll down, you'll find a section on image size. So this is what size our final look is going to be. We're going to be working everything to HD 1080. So if we click the little drop button, we'll find that there is a preset for HD 1080. So we'll switch it over to that. This is our standard size for modern television. We can close that down. To see it in the viewport, within that perspective viewport, there's a little button with a blue dot in it. This shows us our render region. So I'll just go full screen. So we can see that everything inside this screen area is what we're actually going to render. So we can now adjust our staging, our layout of the scene, so that it's going to show our animation off to the best sort of settings. So we might sort of tweak it around a bit, maybe have it bouncing slightly towards camera. So I've decided that I'll try to give us some way that I want to view it. Okay, with my play blast options, what I have is at the top time range. Well, at standard, it'll just take the time slider. Well, I'm well within that, or I can switch to start end and have a frame range, which I type in and leave it on time slider. Um, view that it's going to render. Ornaments is whether it shows things like the frame rate. Well, that's not necessary, so I could turn that off. And then have what format we want to render it in. This is a quick and dirty version of our scene. So we just want it to save as something that's going to be good uh, to view, maybe to put onto our blogs and things like that. Under format, if you change it to QT, which is quick time, and then encoding, which is how it packages it all together, we can switch that with a very good one, which is the one that YouTube and Vimeo use with H.264. Quality, that's going to be fine. Display size, how big should it be? Well, since we've set it up to nice and 20 1080, instead of from window, we can change it from re to from render settings. Now, we don't need to output this at such a high resolution, so we have a scale here. So this is going to do half size. Um, so that'd be quite good. We could even go smaller to say a quarter of the size. It's just going to be a nice, small little one to work with. The next really important one is that the standard settings for this is to play it through and then delete it off file. If we want to keep a hold of a copy, we click on Save to File, click Browse to where we're going to put it. Again, because we've set our project, it's going to put it in the Movies folder. So that's interesting to me. And we'll give it a name. So I'm going to call mine Bouncing Ball and click Save. It's all ready. I just click Play Blast. And what happens very, very quickly is that it plays back our animation and records it. So it'll then go off and play it in something. In this case, it's done it in Media Player. It's much better to watch it in something like QuickTime. So I'm just going to go and navigate to where I've got that stored. Go to my board, into my movies. Here's my bouncing ball. If I actually open it with QuickTime instead, the advantage with watching it in QuickTime is that we can actually scroll through nice and simply. We can also use the arrow keys and go through frame by frame to watch it. And this will be playing back at 25 frames a second. So if I think that's absolutely amazing and I'm all done and finished, I can close that and this will be the file that I upload. However, before you upload any files uh, to the learning space, make sure that you name them with your own name. So I'm going to call mine George Finch.
please bear in mind, I get 70 of these movies. Um, so if you all introduction to it, um, bear in mind you're going to want more than one bounce in yours. And also do more than one version. Do it as a heavy baller, light ball, happy ball or sad ball. Lots and lots of different versions. And as you go along, just make sure you save lots of versions of it. So you've got the original, but you don't save over. And name them as you go along. So have a play with this one. Remember, use that motion, editable motion curves. Have a play around in the graph editor. If you need to bring your curves back to animate some more, it's on the show. Nerves curves. So, for example, I've 